Hey everybody, this is Musa. Welcome to Ambassador Digital Magazine. Um, I just want to say it's been an incredible leave. <sighs> it's been a week. Um, I have to address that. It's been something that we have never been through um, ever, you know, with uh, in terms of just the climate that we're in. Um, so we're going to get to that. Uh, definitely want to give this shout out to the healthcare workers. They were just, um, at the window. We always try to give them a, a shout out. And, um, you know, this is a gay pride, pr gay pride month. So I definitely want to give us a, a shout out to all of the LGBTQ, um, essential healthcare workers that are out there on the front lines as well. Um, we're sending our love to you. Um, to keep strong. Um, today was uh, was a day, was a um, a sad day. We um, had to all witness the the funeral of George Floyd, um, and uh, which you know is just a tragedy you know, all of that is a tragedy in this country. It's hard sometimes to just put that into words other than the fact that I'm frustrated, I'm I'm upset, I'm angry. Um, you know, I stand with the protesters. I was out there with the protesters, um, got into my own situation over, you know, just how black men, black people are treated, how we're, you know, we're hunted, we're, we're, brutalized, we're mistreated in this country. Uh, the flat out racism that we face, the flat out racism from people I, I thought I knew um, in terms of, and I mean racism in the sense of some, in some cases, just the silence, the deafening silence of, of people in terms of how they are viewing this and not being, um, standing with us. So, you know, today has been an emotional day. You know, um, have a you know special program for you, and one you know it's it's, but it's you know you can't avoid what is happening. You have to talk about it. You have to um, to deal with it, whatever's happening. So, um, I want to take a moment to just say, give my condolences to George Floyd, his family. Um, and that we're, we're going to get the justice for your family. The, the American people are going to get the justice. I want first degree murder. Um, they're talking second degree murder for um, all four men. Uh, hopefully all four men get that. And, you know, we haven't forgot about, you know, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor. Um, there's so many. We're going to get into that, you know, um, in the, even the trans community. You know, it's just, it's a horrific moment that we're witnessing in this country. So um, just know that our hearts are with you, that we are together in this. And, um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna see victory in this for us as a people. You know, this, his life, their lives are not in vain. And, you know, we're gonna keep fighting, you know, the rioting and the looting and what they're calling rioting and looting is a manifestation in certain cases of just the pure anger. And we all know there's a lot behind that rioting and looting that isn't, doesn't look, doesn't look like me. We have been infiltrated by different groups, by the KKK. I've seen police officers doing this. I've seen um, people writing B, you know, Black Lives Matter that weren't from, uh, weren't from black, you know, weren't, weren't one of us leaving bricks for us to, 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 you know, to loot. I've seen, you know, there's countless videos, do your research so that you know, we are peaceful people. We always have been, and we always will be. Um, and that we want to see justice. That's our mission in life is for our people to get justice in this country. So I just wanted to say that because it's really important that we address that head on you know, um, 
like I said, it's really hard. You know, it, it's anger first, sadness. It's a combination. You know, I think about our future as people, you know, and how we're going to get together. Um, so I'm going to move into the show on that note. And uh, the first person before we get to our, uh, our cover star, Tracy Africa Norman, um, I wanted to bring on a really good friend of mine who is, before we bring her on, I wanted to bring on a really good friend of mine. The, um, she is the co-founder, the board of directors of Harlem Pride. She tells us what's happening here, the community, um, the LGBTQ community in Harlem, what's happening. And um, I'm gonna bring on right now, she's my dear friend. Could you, could you welcome Carmen Neely to our show? Hey, Hi, Carmen. Lisa. Hey, Carmen. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's an honor to be here on Ambassador Magazine. This is a lovely show. I'm, just, I'm so thrilled that you started this. And um, I, I definitely check it out. So I thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you. And it's so interesting. You know, I was, and, and Karma, I just want to say this. I've been so emotional this week that starting my own show and hearing the healthcare workers and just knowing what went on today, I, I forgot. Welcome to Ambassador Digital Magazine. I wonder if I said that. You know, it's, it, that's the realness. That's the humanness is that I'm, at, you know, before Ambassador D Digital Magazine, I'm a black man. And I'm a black SGL man. So, you know, and that's for, that comes first, you know, but I thank you for being here. So tell us what's happening and, and what's happening with, with, with the community, with Harlem Pride. Okay. Thank you, Musa. And yeah, yeah, there's so much that's going on now, as we all know. Um, Harlem Pride, to be honest, it, it is a very different feel. I mean, COVID-19 was one thing, but the police brutality is a whole nother issue. And, um, you know, we all have to stand up for justice, for racial equality, racial equity. And uh, at Harlem Pride, we are retooling ourselves to work with community members to deal with some of those things and to rally behind police reform. Mm -hmm. um, we had previously scheduled something, you know, prior to COVID, our usual, you know, we have a couple of events leading up to our stage show, our festival, the Heart and Pride Celebration Day. And uh, so now we have some virtual activities, the first of which will be announced tomorrow, actually. So stay tuned to all of our social media channels. You have our Instagram right here. Um, but Pride is a celebration. Pride started off as a riot with our trans siblings at Stonewall. And actually, there were some Pride things before Stonewall, but we typically recognize Stonewall as a pivotal moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, today was George Floyd's funeral. I watched some of it. Um, some of it's hard for me to really just stay and watch the whole thing. But uh, as we keep in mind, George and Brianna and Ahmad. We also have to keep in mind Tony McDade, Nina mm -hmm. Pop, and what recently happened, the unfortunate situation with Ayanna Dior. I think that while we're looking at how the police treat us in America, and of course, let me be clear, it's not every police officer. So I, I don't want to make a blanket statement. We are fully aware that it's not everyone. But while we're looking at that, we have to look inward as the whole LGBTQ community with how we treat our trans siblings. We, we have to really develop a sense of equity among our own family. Yeah. We have to stand up for each other. We have to get into the streets. We have to do policy reform and we have to support each other. Because if we don't support family, the whole LGBTQ family, then how can we realistically expect them to support us? And we are always hollering and screaming about who doesn't support us, but then we turn around and don't support our trans siblings. So that, that's definitely something we have to work on. Um, I mean, in this Pride season, we're encouraging everyone to make sure they complete the census. 
We're encouraging everyone to make sure they're registered to vote. We're encouraging everyone to make sure they look out for their family members, check in with people, mm -hmm. see how everyone is doing. Just because you haven't heard doesn't mean they're fine. Um, there's a lot going on and you can easily find yourself lost or isolated, but definitely reach out to family. I think um, one of the main things at Harlem Pride is as we have expanded our mission statement, from a previous statement about unifying the community and making sure that not only are we respected, but we're celebrated for the fabulous people that we are. We have also engendered that and moved it into focusing on the physical, mental, and economic health and wellness of our community. So you'll start to see more programming for that as we go into the fall. And you'll still see the traditional pride activities, but you'll see them in a different way. We see that if we're going to be a strong community, we have to provide some areas where we can grow. Mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship is one of them. It's one of the focuses for economic health and wellness. If you work for yourself and have a thriving business, you don't have to worry about if your employer will hire you. You don't have to worry about an employer discriminating against you. You don't have to worry about where your next paycheck is going to come. I mean, you're going to have to hustle. So I don't want to say that's a given if you're an entrepreneur. But um, we want to be able to empower our community. We want to try to work on where we're talking about physical and mental health and wellness. Some of these disparities and focus on preventative care. We're going to look at diabetes, hypertension or high blood pressure, uh, heart disease, things of that nature, and how to prevent it, physical exercise and things of that nature. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so you'll see programming coming out about that. You'll also see uh, mindfulness and meditation. We have a lot of stress in our community. I know I feel it right now. I just feel it compounded right now. Yeah. So we want to provide some preventative care in that area as well. So right now, it feels like the twilight zone compared to what we were doing last year when World Pride was here and we had over 20,000 people come through. 12th Avenue uh, to our Harlem Pride Celebration Day. Um, and, and we're actually kind of missing that right now, but there's also a, a bigger movement at hand. It's nice to have the entertainment. I, I certainly miss it. But in this moment, in this movement, there is some forward thinking that we see we want to do to help empower our community to continue to just improve it and fight against some of these things that have held us down. I mean, if there's one knee on the neck of George Floyd, that's the knee on the neck of all of us. And, and we have to come up out of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. You know, I think that's what's important is that we, you know, one of the things I stress, I've always stressed this, Carmen, you know me for a while now, is that I see us there's, 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 there's two communities. There's the LGBTQ, and then there's the straight community. But we're all one family, the black family, right? Here in Harlem. And we yeah. have to figure out, we have to bridge more of those gaps specifically and educate and just show more awareness, which I'm hoping that this is, this shows like this, um, you know, and, and, and that's towards, you know, uh, the trans community. You know, I'm outraged, honestly. You, you mentioned um, Ayan Dior. When I saw the video of that, it sickened me to my stomach. That she didn't have the help, that she didn't, that she was looked at not as a person. She wasn't a viewed as a, a member of the family, that she's an outcast. And that's still happening now with all the strides that have been made, all the visibility. So it has to be, we have to figure out how to go in further and make more connections. You know what I'm saying with that, with the two communities, if you know what I'm saying, as one, that we're all together. I was raised that way. You know what I mean? And it's like I said, I, it's, 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 uh, you know, it pains me to see that. You know, I just wanted to bring that back up because you brought it up in this time, even though with everything that's going on, which we should be together, we should have unity. And that happened. And that's happening. You know, so, and it's pride. We got to remember, we're not going to forget that it's, you know, Pride Month. And it's, it's still, you know, something to celebrate the, the, the advancements the community has made as a whole, 
and we have seen, and we're seeing that more. We're seeing more strides um, in in, uh, in entertainment, in other areas, other sectors, and so that's something still to be proud. There's something always to be proud of. So that's definitely something to be proud of now. And I'm going to say to you, I am proud of you, Carmen, for all the work that you've done that Harlem Pride does in the community. I, I anyone watching, I say support Harlem Pride. Uh, we've shown the um, the the website, the uh, all the social media handles. So get familiar with everything that they're doing. Here we go, HarlemPride.org, and support them. You know whether it be you know service, community service, all the outreaches, or just financial because we all can you know use. We all need money, and so I just say you know let's let's support each other specifically now in these times and and moving forward so that we can give. We can still give to the community because you know we always look forward to that the end of end of June, right? And now it's a different time with with uh, with the whole COVID situation. So we have to uh, figure out a new strategy, a new way that we can still stay connected as a community. You know, so I want to thank you, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, gracing us coming on. You know, I, at this time I like to bring on. I always like to. You know, mentioned my, um, you know, my partner Paul, who's behind the scenes. He always likes to kind of pop his head up and say, "Hey, what's up, Paul Morion?" I said it right this time. Hey. How you doing? Uh, I yeah, we love you, Carmen. So we're grateful you're here, especially during Pride Month. Um, all the work you do at Harlem Pride. So we appreciate. It. You know, we support you, love you. So whatever we can do to help with uh, getting the message out, we look forward to tomorrow's tomorrow's uh, announcement. Right. Yes, I'll right. be looking forward to that. We are. So, um, and we want to thank everybody that's involved. We have a great staff that works with us, a great team, and you have a great team too. So, um, you know, and hold on a second. Uh, okay. So, just got a little call from, you know, the thing about this show and like with anything that works, it's always at the technical side. So, we're trying to get Tracy. Um, and welcome her on board, okay? So um, I want to thank you, Carmen, for being on board. And we're going to bring see if we can bring Tracy up now, if that's possible. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you. Hold on, is she here? I'm here, Tracy. Tracy, the legendary international model. This. And I know right now we're having a little bit of technical difficulty. Hello? Can you hear me? We can hear you. Hi, Tracy. But I have a bad connection from you. So you have a bad connection from me. Okay. I can't understand because you keep breaking up and I would like to. Okay. Yes, yeah, so so on your end, there's a bad connection. Okay. Because you sound very digital. So I can't understand what you're saying. Okay, well, you know what? Maybe. Would it work if you call my phone and then, let's try and then possibly I can? Let's try that, Tracy. Hold on a second. Let me. Let's try this, okay? Say hi to Tracy, everybody, while I figure this out for her, for me. Let's see. I'm going to get to her. Okay. Let me try this. Let me try it this way. Allow, allow. It's studio. Tell me. Oh. How am I? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Tracy? Tracy, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, 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 yes. I can hear you. No, 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 no,
Can you hear? Can you hear Tracy? I can hear something, but you're not clear. You keep breaking up. Okay. See, we see and hear both of you just fine. That's interesting. So the audience can hear us. We're having trouble hearing ourselves. Okay, so we're having a little in 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 studio moment. Okay. Um, I need to. Okay, we leave this. I'll leave. Okay. How's that? Is that any better? Is that any better, Tracy? Are you speaking to me? I am speaking to you. So maybe we really want this to happen. Uh, Paul, anything you can suggest? Can you talk to Tracy? See if yours yeah. Let me see if yours works. Hi, Tracy, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me? Okay, Tracy just froze. I am. No, I don't think she can. The connection might be the the, the connection on her side may be the issue. It's really difficult. I'm sorry, when you hand yourself, yeah, no, you sound um, like your voice is breaking up. So I don't know. Musa, if you can, if you can clear. call, hmm? if you can call, but not, not use speakerphone, just use the phone, not not the speakerphone. Huh, what? Call her, but don't you call her on a regular phone and mm -hmm. hear you at least, and then she can respond because we can hear her. Okay, so I'm gonna call her and she'll hear from here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, you, it's like we're like filming you making a phone call so she can hear you. <laughs> okay, I'm willing to try it. It'll work. Okay. It's like, it's like uh, you know. Let's a work it out. A little bit of old school and new school. Okay, let's try it. Tracy. Can you, you can hear me. Yes. So Tracy can hear me. Thank you, Paul. That's an interesting way of going about it. So we're going to have you on my phone as well as, um, yes. okay, so you can hear me, right? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, sweetheart. So yes. thank you for coming. I'm sorry for any technical difficulty. And this is a, everybody knows this is a crazy time, honey, with everything going on in the world, but you look gorgeous. Okay, I'm hope I'm living up to something for you because I was like, it's Tracy Africa Norman, so I want to just you know get a little get a little sexy for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So anyway, Tracy, this is a great. This is how we're gonna do it. Um, great minds, all these great minds together, think alike. And I just want to say thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, happy pride. And, um, you know, we're going to just talk a little bit. Why don't, we, why don't we, okay, we can hear you just fine. Okay. So why don't we talk a little, why don't we go back a little bit, right? And let's talk a little about your story in terms of you're from Newark, Newark, New Jersey, a Jersey girl, right? Yes. And, um, tell us a little bit about what it was like, you know, for you growing up, you know, being, you know, and, and 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 you know what kind of what kind of environment uh, in terms of for you being Tracy, especially as a little a young person, was it for you? I want to start there. Well, I was very shy as a child. Well, I was very shy. So when when as I, as I was mm -hmm. growing up. I just did the things that I was supposed to do. I just did and things that I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind that I'm a child of the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Mm -hmm. so, and also being by a single mother. So, and also being by a single mother. Okay. So, I so, also had a sister. So I was also had a sister, so I also helped you know, doing the chores, picking her up from school, taking her to school, making sure that we're both safe back in the house. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Sorry, my earphone keeps coming out. <laughs> okay. And so during the course of me growing up, from my adolescence to I graduated high school, I was overweight. So I never really cure with myself. Uh, and when I sat on the steps of um, the graduation for high school, I told my mother that I wanted to live my life as a woman. Wow. And she understood mm -hmm. and didn't care. Mm. That's beautiful. God bless, God bless it for, God bless your mother for allowing you to live your truth and be who you are. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I can tell you guys are close. So how did you then go? How did you go from okay, so now we're in high school, right? When did you kind of venture? I want to ask you, how did you venture into say, you know, we called the gay scene back then, but the LGBTQ scene, right? So how did you venture into the gay scene back in that time, being, you know. Who you know now living your truth yes. back in the days? Who who brought you in? Is maybe I want to ask that question. Mm. Uh, it started in junior high school, and the funny thing about it at that time with mother. I ran into one. The other was dance, and it was Halloween. They dressed me up and took me into New York to a club. Mm. And I was loving every second of it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what club? What club? Tell us. Are you I, okay. I, I don't remember. Yeah. They had to say, the <laughs> we didn't get we didn't get in because we look look too young. Okay. <laughs> Were you, um, so, and at that time, did you start anywhere near the ball scene or was that later? Or were we talking, when did that come in? The ball scene for me was after I graduated high school. Okay. And that's when I did my transition. So, I don't know if you understood. I was breaking up, I think. Okay, I can hear you though. You said that was your transition, right? Okay, I heard that. We, yes. we all heard that, yep. And okay. so there were about, about three other girls who I was introduced to. And they were talking about going into New York, into Harlem, to the Elk Lounge that there was this ball that was going on. I didn't understand what they're talking about. Mm. And I, once I got there, we were standing around the uh, dance floor where people were performing. And the face category came up. Okay. And one of the people that I was up on the floor, so I went up to the judges. I didn't have any makeup on. And one of the judges had a handkerchief that I just grabbed and wiped my face to show them that I didn't have makeup. Oh my God. And, uh, <laughs> But it did matter because I wasn't well received. You back weren't in the seventies. I was not well received back in the seventies. What were they? What and was that? On? That ball was the Paris Dupree. Mm. Okay. And so let's let's move it. So then you weren't. You said you weren't received there. 
where were you received? How, who, where did you find your your place then? Or just like in the ball community? community, or just outside of the ball community? Who was your who, who, where was your comfort space? Where was your safe space for you at that at that point? Um, well, back then, and because I did my transition, I never felt as though I fitted in anywhere. And I was forced to become mm -hmm. a sheltered person, a private person. Okay. And so I was able to meet some friends one day when I was downtown in town. And they recognized me and I guess they heard through the grapevine that I changed my name. Mm -hmm. And one of them was Tommy Garrett. I know Tommy. <laughs> Who was this? was with Ford? Yeah, thought that I knew for, and 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 that I should be a model, and I was like, okay. <laughs> but prior to that, I had a different dream for my set. I wanted to be a race car driver a race car driver mind you a female yes a female race car driver i, love it. <laughs> I wanted to be the first black woman to become a race car driver because i was obsessed with speed it was very exciting for me that's amazing Imagine that we would we would have never known Tracy, the supermodel, because she would have been out there just whipping around the Indy 500 or something, instead of. <laughs> no, 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 not the not not the Indy 500. I wanted to do road racing. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. So let's okay, let's okay then. You know that okay that was the dream that you had. Um, but then how did the whole, so Tommy saw you and you knew you were beautiful. That, that was that your, that was your entry point into modeling or how did that happen per se? Let's talk about that. Yeah, that was my induction into modeling and that Newark was my training ground. And people took me underneath their wings and taught me how to, to walk okay. in a fashion show. And so I practiced, practiced, practiced. Okay. And then when you practice and did, did it come right away for you? Or you like, cause you know, you're a fabulous, you can, you're a fabulous catwalk girl. So did it, did it happen? That was, you were a natural or you did work at it. You said you practiced, but was there, did they see something there? And they, or. No, I had to really uh, practice a lot because I had no idea what I was doing. Wow, see that? Wow. <laughs> At the time. And also I had to set up a mirror where I can see myself. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I, walked, I worked on mm -hmm. was to try to get my bow legs in control. Ooh. Okay, so you had to really kind of like, put, was it the one foot in front of each other thing? Yes, uh -huh. I had to learn how to put one foot in front of the other to camouflage how legged I was. Wow. Well, you know what, Tracy and, and Paul, can we show maybe a clip of young Tracy that... It's serving face and hair and everything else. Look at you. And I have Nola Wong on the floor with Tracy. Nola Wong. Where's Nola? <laughs> wow. Well, that doesn't look like, um, you know, that looks like all the confidence in the world right there, baby. You look gorgeous. 
You're gorgeous now and was, I mean, stunning. A stunner, for real. Um, so, okay, so let's 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 talk about this. So now you're you're getting your confidence, you're modeling, you know, we're talking about probably doing some local shows in Newark and stuff like that, right? Okay, cool. And then how did like let's um okay, and also you know, and we'll get to like maybe do a clip of you know ball clip later a little bit later. But how did you go from there? When did the whole how did you get discovered? What happened there? Let's talk about that. How we discover like the big you know? I had a friend big, by the name of Al Grundy who worked for Audrey Smalls, and he was telling me about where the designers, who were the designers that were giving shows and always get called me and gave me a list because he sent me there to see how the professionals walk. Mm -hmm. And one day he sent me to the Pierre Hotel. I was thinking that I was going to as I approach the Pierre Hotel, I noticed some black female models that were across the street from me and they were gathering on a corner and talking. And then a group had separated Then a group went into the hotel. So I was the street, followed them into the hotel. They all shuffled on to the elevator. I got on the elevator went up and I was the first one off. I turned left, they all turned right. <laughs> then I turned around and followed them down the hall. Oh, wow. And at the time, I still didn't know what was going on. So they were going into this suite one at a time. And so when it was my turn, I got to meet the photographer who was Irving Penn the designers, who was Basili, an Italian designer. And I got to meet the editor of Italian Vogue. And he took my information because I didn't have a portfolio. And they called me two days later and told me I had a two day thing with Italian Vogue. And you know what, Tracy? We're gonna show that. This is the iconic photo shoot, the iconic pictures done by the phenomenal, legendary Irving Penn. Amazing. And look at the models. We, uh, Ro I see Romney up there. I think that's Jennifer Bryce, yourself. I don't know who's on the bottom there with you, but I recognize Romney and Jennifer Bryce and yourself. We have another one, uh, Paul? Have another one possibly? Okay. But that's amazing. What a way. Oh, wait, hold on. Okay, one more. We, okay. We'll get when we get that, we'll bring it up. That is stuff of legend. I mean, one of you know, is that's a legendary moment. Here we go. We have Peggy Dillard, this the uh, you know, Vogue cover girl Peggy Dillard, also a very good friend of mine along with Jennifer Bryce, Romney, and yourself. This is incredible. This is now, this is anytime, this is legendary. This is classic, fantastic by Irving Penn. There you have it. I'm, I'm like, woo, just looking at it. <laughs> and how did you feel? So now we do, now Tracy, you've done, I mean, listen, you started in this case, you started right at the top because you can't get better than Irving Penn. And you can't get better than Italian Vogue. You're Vogue and Irving Penn. So what happened from there after you did the shoot? I mean. Well, because of that, I started as an international model. Absolutely. And the day, the last day of the photo shoot, Mr. Penn called an agency and told the person on the other line that they had young Beverly Johnson on the standing in front of him. Wow. 
Wow. And you look like her, so. And then I went, I had, I got the appointment to go. And it was Zoli Management. No. Wow. Wow, Tracy. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know, Zoli, they were the top, the top agencies at the time were Ford, Zoli, and Wilhelmina. Those were the big three in the industry. So you actually came in right at the big, big, and did you see, was Zoli, was he himself alive? At the, was Zoli alive at the time? Yes, he was alive, and that's who my meeting was with. Look, my God. All I can say is my God. You don't understand. And it is like in fashion, in terms of model uh, modeling agencies, there was Wilhelmina was alive at the time. Eileen Ford was alive at the time, as well as Zoli was alive at the time. So a lot of the models back then um, met the actual, the namesake of the agency. They, they, you know, they're, they're, they're gone now. So you were part of that, you know, pioneering moment in, in, in black models, Tracy. Um, and so here we, here you are at, here you are at Zoli, right? In the women, now you're in the women's division, right? They took you into the new faces. Okay. Division because they normally the business guys when you first start you're kind of a new face and then they have the women's division so she's kind of between women's division but then you come in through when you're coming through um Irving Penn you kind of they, they try to just milk you put you right on in, 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 you know right in the races because now they're like if she's bring brought us by Irving Penn we can just um send her right into Vogue and Essence and all that other good stuff right get your book together yeah the whole I had I had started flying to Florida and I was doing a lot of catalog because I needed to learn how to move in front of a camera. So that's mm -hmm. where they kept sending me. And okay. so I was working with this high end catalog company called iMagnum. <laughs> yeah. And then once that Essence Magazine had called and wanted to see me because at that time the word was being around because they were promoting me as a young Beverly Johnson. So I did a photo shoot with Essence Magazine where they, Andre Douglas was a wig designer and he had this new wig he wanted to promote called the Ross. And so they put that on me and then they put this big choker around my neck and told me it was a symbol of marriage from a tribe in Africa. That was my first photo shoot with Essence. Fantastic. I mean, we're talking about the, like Essence is still, I mean, there's very few black magazines out there, but at the time that was the black magazine for fashion magazine for women. So you were, representing like the goddess and that's your first photo shoot. Wow, that's incredible. And so what happened from there? Do you, um, what were some of the, um, and so what were some of the jobs that you did from there? Did you get the Clarol right after that? When did the Clarol happen? The Clarol campaign? Yes, shortly after the photo shoot with Essence Magazine, I did land the job for Clarol. Well, my agent called me and told me that it was a test. Wow. They sent me to the address and from the inn and then did a photo shoot. They liked the photo and they, my agent called me into the agency, told me that I was hired and that I would be under contract for two years for Clairol to be on your hair color box. Not only, not only is that, not only is that Clairol box, Clairol born beautiful, which you are born beautiful, an iconic Clairol campaign, but it's just, you know, that was huge back then. Those jobs were coveted in terms of for you know any black model that got that would be seen literally in every single black woman, every household. You know what I mean? So that was amazing to have that. 
And then what kind of happened? I mean, I'm sure your career, we're, we're seeing an ascension here. I'm sure your career just took off, kept going from there. What happened after that? Yes, I did a couple of other photo shoots with, uh, I want to say Tony Barboso. Okay. Anthony Barboza. And from there, Essence, yeah, Anthony, sorry. Mm -hmm. And Essence had called me again. I have, okay. I'm getting an X, so forgive me if I'm taking. And so what happened was, is that they took three days to braid my hair, bead my hair in gold beads. And then when I showed up at the photo shoot, I got all painted up because uh, Susan had me to that I was Cleopatra sailing down the Nile. And in beauty shots, I have a tendency to have tunnel vision once I get the character that the that's in for. Mm -hmm. And so as I'm in front of the camera and I'm shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting, suddenly the door to the left from the street opened up to the studio. And that part of the room felt very negative. So I lost concentration and I never looked over there until the person called Susan over to speak with them. And as the, and the photographer noticed that I was treated also and asked me to just relax. So when I did, I happened to look over there and it was a hairdresser from the first photo shoot that I did with Essence Magazine. After that conversation, Susan came over, looked at the photos and said that we have it. So she shut the photo shoot down. So that's interesting that you said this, Tracy. Um, and I'm only going to I'm going to make a reference to this because, uh, you know, this particular incident was recreated in a hit series pose, something very similar. The inspiration for that. We're actually going to, as a matter of fact, we're going to we're going to show that. Oh, OK. Someone has taken it upon themselves to tell your story. Angel, the vibe is very Sophia Loren. Sultry, mysterious. It's just a brand new campaign. Don't overthink it. I am a huge fan. Thank you. When you used to walk realness, oh, the children gagged. I knew you was going someplace. Now look at you. I got a call from Seth. The creative director accused me of pulling a publicity stunt on her dime. I didn't know what she was talking about. She said I asked for a girl. Not a drag queen. Wow. I mean, I think when that was seen, it was the, the scene seen around the world because we were all like, we, you know, people that know you were like, wow, the, the, the fact that you served as an inspiration, your, part of your story served as an inspiration for Pose, which is a huge hit. Um, how did you feel about that when you saw that? Was there any consultation with you in terms of that or uh, no I was surprised that it happened but I was also honored at the same time that they mm -hmm. would tell my story mm -hmm. but also when I was looking at the series they still were telling stories true stories sorry 
the girls from past. Mm -hmm. And my story just happened to be one of them. Well, that's amazing that, you know, I was, uh, that, you know, one of the things about that, Tracy, is that we went from a time where, you know, early, early, what is it, late, no, late 80s, we had Paris is Burning, and that was one story that was told. And now we've seen an evolution in terms of how far we've come that Pose was executive produced by Janet Mock and written by her. She's one of the most powerful people and she was cho chose to tell your story. And I think that's incredible that, you know, there's so much visibility and that, you know, your story, you know, this story in terms of with Pose is fantastic. You know, I think it's it's great that we're seeing that. So, um, you know, so Tracy, tell me, after, after you leave, after you get, after that situation happens with the agents, with, with, uh, with Susan Taylor and Essence Magazine, what happened after that? What what happened with your agency? My work stopped. Wow. My work stopped immediately. The next day when I called, there was nothing for me to do. They had no interviews, no go-sees, no testing. And I had just got my very first apartment with the money from Clairol on 70th West End Avenue. Mm -hmm. So I was determined to work because I had rent to pay all to feed. Right. But there was nothing for me. So eventually I lost the apartment and had to go back to mom's house mm -hmm. in New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, that's the that's the thing about the business is it, it's so you know we know it's a cutthroat industry. Um, I want to talk about someone who I know who you know it's great in this business that we can have people who are in our corner, who love us, who support us, um, and I know that one of the main people in your life who's an amazing man. I'm just going to start there who is one of the great, great, a great, great uh, designer. And, um, you know, everybody, everybody out there, you know, Newark's own, you know, legendary designer. And I want to talk a little bit about and show a picture a little of Douglas Says. Yes, well, I met Douglas when I did go for, for him. Mm -hmm. He remembers something else. We met, had a meeting prior to, but he wanted me to wear one of his dresses in the fashion show. Mm -hmm. And then he took me under his wing and under his muses. Mm -hmm. And that's how we met. And then our friendship started to develop. However, I had to teach him the word no because he was spoiling me. And I was a bit of a, a bitch back then. <laughs> oh, you were. Hmm. <laughs> yes, because my mother spoiled me. He sheltered me because she was very worried about me. So everyone that I met, like Tom Harrod, oh, I see he that. also loved me, me. Douglas had a habit of loving me and sheltering me and protecting me. And as our friendship started growing, I had to teach him the word no because he was a bit generous and I felt as though I was taking advantage of his friendship. So I had to change my attitude because I felt there was something more there. And that's how we became friends for the last wow. 35 years now. Fantastic. Um, and I love, I love what he does with you. I love that you're his muse. 
Every designer loves to have a muse. They have to have a muse in their life. Look at that. I love that. And you represent him. You two are like, you know, perfect match. Perfect match. Perfect match. And we'll bring Douglas on in a second. I want to say hi to Douglas. Fantastic. Hey, okay, let's, let's. He's here, Dougie. You come, come sneak in, say hi. I want to all say hi to you. Hey, Doug. Hey, Douglas. Hey, what's happening? Thank you so much, first How off. you? Great. Just a little. I wish I had your hair. I've been, oh, I've been Yes, I was thinking about like you know this whole the whole social you know the uh, the COVID thing. You're in the house, and I'm growing my hair. It ain't growing like yours. <laughs> you have beautiful hair. But I want to thank you for just. I want to say first, I want to thank you so much for what you are, because not only you know besides being an amazing designer, fierce, fierce. We're just showing everything up here that we can. Um, the person that you are, you know. The person I've met is just a, a sweetheart, and we all need those people in our lives. And I'm so grateful to you just looking in on this and hearing Tracy talk about you, the love that they love exchange that you do have with one another. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about that relationship that you have with Tracy. Right. Well, um, the, the beginning, the beginning or the middle or or current. <laughs> you know, overall, just give us that in a, in a nice little, with a little bow around it. Okay. 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 Well, I'll I'll say, like she said, she had to teach me how they know her. Um, I hear the echo too. I I, I recall at one point I I had just got back from London and. I had bought myself you know, glasses, bags, this, that, you know, bought myself a bunch of little stuff. And Tracy came over. By then, we were hanging out. She came over and she says, um, can I have those? Yeah. Hesitantly, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and should I say what you said to me? <laughs> yes. Go ahead. She said, she said to me, you fat going to learn to stop giving me everything I asked for. And she said, I don't want them. I just wanted to see if you would give them to me. And then from that point, you know, I had to learn, I had to learn to know. And now I'm really, I'm an A student now. I'm like, no. Before she gets out, I'm like, no. So yeah. But, you know, I guess she's, she's the yin to my yang, you know. We kind of balance each other out. Mm -hmm. We keep each other sane, you know. So yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. I just wanted to say, you know, thank you so much for coming on the show and telling us, you know, just the, the relationship because people see it and it's obvious that you like, like you said, you're the yin to the yang, but I just like the way that you two, it's how you create what you, what you're putting out there is also just fantastic. You know, couldn't have this show without you. Now that you're there, now that you're, now that you're both there, why don't we do, why don't we, why don't we um, show Paul why don't we just show them some of Tracy let's 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 do the Italian Vogue why not because we can <laughs> uh oh here we go <laughs>
Tracy, isn't that where we met? That's it. I found I find that so ironic that you started your career or basically blew up with the um, Irving Penn on Italian Vogue. And here we are. That's where you and I met. Right. It was my first time ever doing Italian Vogue. And I was so honored when I heard the lineup. It was myself, Renal White uh, and Munya. I was Munya's partner and the great who the, the great Munya, you know, uh, Issa Laurent Muse Munya. And your partner was the great. Renal White, my mentor, the fabulous, Renal. also Newark. Y'all Newark kids, honey. What's in the, <laughs> y'all beauties out there. Y'all just beauties, that's all y'all, y'all beauties out there, you know. Um, so that was fabulous just to see that together. And I'm, when I was there, I, I knew I had to meet you, I had to know you. And that was one of the things from that shoot, we just, we just clicked. And I was like, I got to work with Tracy. I had to work with Tracy. And I was so fortunate to work with you. And one of the things I wanted to, wow, that's, well, that's me and Munya. What's, where's, um, and where, we have the other one? We'll get the other one. Uh, uh -huh. That was a second time meeting Munya. I first met her when I was in Paris. Uh -huh. Along with Tommy Garrett. And that's where she remembered me from, through Tommy. Yeah, Tommy's the connector. Yes, yes he Yeah. He is. Iconic model Tommy Garrett. <laughs> people that don't know, you should know, do your research. You know, there was many people back yeah, he was the 70s into the 80s. Well, let's see this photo of, oh, that's us together. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. <laughs> that was backstage. Um, oh, I want to thank Patty Wilson for hiring me to do this. The great Patty Wilson, um, the incredible creative director, stylist, Patty Wilson. We thank you so much for always doing the best, the most, the best, everything. She's everything in um, the industry, fashion industry. Um, and it was a great picture with Renal White. Yeah, she was fabulous. She's amazing. Um, does Italian Vogue, black woman, must tell, she's a black woman who does Italian Vogue. When you see those uh, editorial shoots, that's Patty. So, um, yeah, but I saw you then and I said to myself, I got to work with you. And at the time I was doing, you know, my producing and doing a lot of things for different magazines. And I said, when I have my own, I have my own. I said, we're going to do something. And I'm so honored to be able. Oh, oh, my goodness. Come on now, y'all. Definitely. Yes. Come on, everyone. Feast. Just feast. Feast. Just feast. Feast. <laughs> if you don't know, huh, girl. The face, the face, the face, cheekbones and everything. All of that. Just goddess. Give me goddess. <laughs> you see it. <laughs> you with her right now. <laughs> Love it. Love it. This is history. You're part of history. We're both a part of history, huh? We're all a part of history. We all made our mark. Okay. Yeah, the funny thing about history. Hmm. That we're living our lives. And we both are creative people, not realizing that there is some sort of history going on that we're making for ourselves. And it was those who wrote me that I had all of this to share with the public New York Mag to do that interview. Yeah. And I want to say I'm so grateful that you did the interview for me. It was an emotional one. People don't know. It was a very emotional one for me, as well as Tracy, revealing a lot of things, what it's like 
people don't understand, you know, when you being just being who you are, like, damn it. We, you know, just we want to be us. We have every right. And I just love, I loved every minute of it, Tracy. Um, and for that, I want to I want to show we want to launch our cover. You guys have seen previews, but let's show the cover of Ambassador Digital Magazine. Can we get that? And we're going to bring out Stephen's been waiting so patiently. Who was who did your hair? He wants to say hi. Stephen Rice. <laughs> Here we go. Oh my god. Hi, Steve. Yes. <laughs> Stephen Rice. Hi. How are you? Yes. Hey. What's going on, Tracy? <laughs> I, Look I, at I, that. Everybody. Hi. How are you? Greg, what's going on, Douglas? How are you guys? Good to see you. Honey, look how beautiful. You too, definitely. You look stunning. Well, yes, we knew you were gorgeous. I can't see you, but it's you. I'm having how a little you feel? issue. There you are. You too. Yeah. You look stunning. Yes, I can't see you, but it's... I'm happy. How do you feel? There you are. You too. Yeah. You look stunning. Hi. Everyone's saying how gorgeous it is. You look stunning. You're stunning. It's Absolutely hard because gorgeous. we don't have... Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, Is Kevin there? Kevin, what? Uh, uh, Kevin um, couldn't join us for tonight. He's, you know, he had, you know, has been having with the family and everything like that. We want to send our love to Kevin. Kevin, Kevin make up. Oh, okay. right. You, you were a great team, and the wonderful yes. Mark Baptiste. Yeah. <laughs> and here's it in black and white. Love it. Mark was wonderful. He was very patient. <laughs> and Douglas, it, I had a very long wait. <laughs> and Doug, it was styled by Robin earrings. Robin um, Fernandez and Victoria ben Fernandez Hernandez, and it was uh, and we're, she's wearing Douglas says right there. Looks amazing, awesome. gorgeous. We did. We couldn't think of. You know what? We decided to do a dual cover. Black and white in color, so you have both. So we can't see it. Though. We can't see it yet. Oh, you can't see the cover yet? It's gorgeous. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. It's wonderful. Honey, honey, please let it load up. It's loading up. Okay. I see it. It's everything. <laughs> it's everything, honey. Woo! Woo, child. Did you see it? Waited forever. <laughs> <laughs> We're still waiting. We're still waiting. Okay. Well, Stephen, I want to no, thank. We haven't. We, we, didn't, we didn't see the cover. Oh, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Thank you for the invitation. It's a pleasure working with the legendary Tracy, Africa Norman. Truly a pleasure. Yet? Oh, you don't see it yet. I'm with you. You know what it is? It's because no. connection, Tracy. So there's so much going on. Also, uh, you know what it is? It's because connection, Tracy. But it's, we're looking at it, and it's amazing. It's stunning. In color and in black and white. I need one autographed next time I see you, Tracy. <laughs> I would love to. Everyone uh, asking the magazine just uh, um, at ambassador underscore magazine. Follow us. Follow us on YouTube as well. Ambassador Digital Magazine. Um, and we'll be sharing. Uh, we'll be loading that up. It's an online magazine. We don't do print. People have asked us that. It's just strictly online social media. So basically it becomes this and you can share the covers and share, you know, just share 
the, the beautiful images as well. That's why we wanted to do it. Oh, and then here, we're just gonna, this is her on Out 100. When you did, you were honored with Out 100, legend. Wonderful, um, but amazing. That was amazing. You can hear the interview too. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, why don't uh, okay. I love it. It's fantastic. Did you guys see the cover yet? Did, was did it load? I'm gonna send it to you. I'm just gonna send it to your phone, okay? That way you can at least look at it. It's stunning, absolutely. We have, to, we have got, you know, we were trying to, oh, hold up, wait. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay, well, I appreciate everything's that. Gonna be on, <laughs> yes, everything's gonna be online too. So, hold on. Go. All right. Tracy. To send it to Kevin, too. Yes. Since he's not here. Okay. It stays online. So, since it's an online magazine, how long does it stay online? It's going to stay online. You know, it'll be, it'll be up. On, it'll be on our ambassador underscore mag and on YouTube and on um, Facebook. We're not taking it down. That's the good part about digital. Wonderful. It doesn't, we don't have to, um, you know, it's there for in perpetuity. What is that, that word? Yeah. So it'll be up. So anyone can go on and they'll just the, the beautiful and share it and they can see the cover and read the story. So the, um, story, the actual story that we did, me and Tracy did, will be up as well. And then also this will be up. Like I said, this is live, so it's take a videotape. So we'll have that too. And I just sent it to you. Um, I sent you the black and white. Did you get it? Okay, here's the color. Here's a beautiful color. One yeah, second. See, I have the black and white. One second. I have the black and white. Yes. Okay. Wait. Look. Uh, you know another thing. You know what I was told, guys. Because everybody's home, <laughs> there's so much like it, it clogs. Sometimes can clog the whole online thing. They said so. But I want to. I just sent it to you, Tracy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sending it to Kevin as well. And to me. Okay. <laughs> Get it. Mm -hmm. Isn't the color amazing? That's cool. That's the one that we, we, the color is we, amazing. We wanted to do both. Actually, the, the color one is the one that will be up online, guys. She the, color, the color will be up on, online. That's Mark Baptiste. Thank you, Mark Baptiste. Amazing Mark. I love you. The legendary, iconic Mark Baptiste, a dear friend of mine. And um an thank you, Mark. Amazing photographer. And thank you to and there's Douglas. Can we show um, oh, can we show the video of that? There was a cute video that we did that was done. Someone shot that video. Maybe people can see that too. The camera. But I love the cover. I love it. So it'll be up. You guys can see that. Oh, yes, this is great. <laughs> so, you saw this? Okay. We, we, we okay. They're here with the, the phone. 
What happened? So my phone got disconnected. Fabulous. Can we hear? Yes, sir, I'm calling you. You have to call for me back. You got this thing. One second. Can you hear me now? No. I got this. Okay. You know what we're having right now? We're having a bit of the technical difficulty, I think. That's called symbol. So, but you can hear me. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You can hear me? Yeah, you're going to have to. Are we frozen? Yeah, we're frozen. Call us. You have to. It was just a technical difficulty. Got disconnected. Okay, but you're back. Okay, so what we're gonna do? I'm just gonna say to everyone. I'm glad we showed the cover. I'm glad everybody came through. Mm -hmm. The purpose was really to honor Tracy, Africa Norman for all of her contributions to um, the community. You know, there's so many communities that, you know, um, the, you know, fashion, international modeling community, you're part of, you're a pioneer in that, you're a pioneer in the trans community, LGBTQ community, the black, the black community, okay? All of those things, um, even if I don't, here she is, another picture of Tracy, um, if she can, even if she can't, even if I like she can hear me, I want to just say that sometimes the connection, guys. I think everybody that's done the zooms and done all these things, and especially now because there's so many people logging on, that sometimes these these things happen. But I wanted to take the time. We did, we did, you know, see the cover. We got your story, Tracy. People can read your story. They should go on to. Our, our, our page, our YouTube page, channel, which is Ambassador Digital Mag. Follow Tracy at The Real Tracy. I think it's The Real Tracy. What's okay? The Real Tracy Africa. Follow Douglas Says at Douglas Says. So it's Douglas as. Follow Stephen. I see Stephen. Stephen <laughs> right. NYC. Been phenomenal um, hairstylist, did an amazing job. Follow Mark Baptiste, um, 007, Mark Baptiste 007, Paul Marjan, more Jean, J O N, not J O, uh, Paul M O R E J O N. You can follow me at um, I am Musa Jackson. Plus. Thank you all. I see everyone over there. We've been, you know, having this moment uh -huh. here. People have logged on. I see. So many people want to thank for supporting us, supporting Ambassador Digital Magazine. And I think there's technical difficulties on, on that end as well. So um, and it happens. It's a beautiful cover. It's a beautiful cover. Incredible. Can you show that cover one one more time, Paul? Can we put that up? Oh, put that up so people can see it. Put up, put up the color and make it big. You can enlarge it, make it enlarge. Yeah, 
That's great. Thank you, guys. I don't know. I hope everyone, can you hear me, everyone? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so people can actually hear me. I just want to say thank you guys for joining us tonight. I'm glad we did this. This is um, amazing. She's an icon. She's a legend. She's a pioneer. Tracy African Norman. And the issue is Close Up and Personal, Ambassador Digital Magazine. I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Douglas. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Paul, for coming on. My thank pleasure. You. And thank you, everyone, that tuned in tonight. Stay safe. Stay safe out there. Yeah, it froze. It froze. So stay safe out there. And thank you. It, it, you don't know what you're missing? Huh? Did you hear me? I hear you. Yes, and I hear you. Yeah. It was beautiful. It's beautiful. You have that. <clears throat> mm -mm. Just hear you. No. Hear you. No. I hear Doug. I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much, Musa. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Tracy. And Douglas. <laughs>